Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my Space Life Simulator Orbit and Docking Tutorial. Um, there's not really much to say about this, is there? Might as well just, I don't know. Well, first off, uh, this is how you need to dock. So you need to wait until your space station, so I'll set out target here. Uh, you need to wait until it's roughly 30, 40 degrees uh, away from the launch pad where you're looking from. Now you see here I overshot a little bit. Uh, it's still possible to dock like this. In fact, it's very much easy to dock like this. However, it's just slightly simpler and more brute force approach. Well, it's, it's more efficient actually to do it when uh, this space station or the object you're docking to is 45 degrees away. Because it just gives you enough time to get up there. So here we are currently going through 8.5 kilometers. This video is sped up to 2 times speed, but I will try to make the audio regular, you know, relatively good. And out of the atmosphere. Now you see here I'm getting all my horizontal velocity before I get my vertical velocity. This is the most efficient way to orbit. Um, no, for those people who have seen my Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy video, Falcon Heavy is coming out next week. Those who have seen my Falcon 9 video know this is not a fully reusable rocket, I'm afraid. Sorry. Um, but as you can see here, we are getting into orbit, and the thing we want to do is try and match our orbits the best we can. I didn't do an amazing job at that. Uh, you can see there, we have the closest approach of four and a half kilometers. And I thought, oh yeah, let's time warp now. Great idea, let's just get rid of the launch escape system. Uh, and then I looked in and I realized, damn, my periapsis is still below the atmosphere. Get into orbit. There we go. So I time warped and then I got my apoapsis up to the same place as the other craft's apoapsis. So you can see there that blur is the closest approach. And I overshot it a little bit. Not that It's not that difficult to overshoot, so be careful. So yeah, I'm just going to do it again. And after a little more time warping, there. Now you see that little blue thing, those are solar panels from my giant space station. There it is, just to the south of us now, well, ju just down, up, but there's no up and down in space, so it basically it's near us, it's below us in this view. So we are now getting towards it, we are, I'd say, 100 meters out, and I kept on trying to throttle my engine like this, and then I realized it was turned off. So yeah, 10 extra points to idiot mode. Now, to dock, this is very important. You need to match your velocity with the craft that you are docking with. Uh, and you can dock without RCS, like I did with most of the space station. But, oh my god, it is a pain. Do not ever do that, please. If, if, you, if you care about your mental health and sanity, do not try to dock without RCS. It's a nightmare. I mean, I did it in my Saturn 5 or Saturn 12 video, but just seriously, dock with RCS, it's so much easier. So here we are, docking. You want to get your docking ports nicely aligned, because if they're like that, they won't attach, and attached. So this is my double helix station. Uh, I will put a poll up just in the top right corner about now, asking, uh, you know, what type of video you want me to make for next week? Should I... You know, should I add an extra segment to my space station and show that off a bit? Or should I do something else? Uh, leave your suggestions in the poll or the comments below. So here we are just refueling the station with this tiny thing. So the RCS can be replenished. And we're going to turn the station. We don't need to. But it looks nice. So we're turning it also because it'll make it easier for us to detach and use less fuel orienting ourselves. And because I wanted to make this realistic, I'm thrusting away from the station with RCS and now turning on my engine. And we're out of fuel. And you might be thinking, oh no, but Anton, you're still in orbit. Well, no I'm not. As you just saw in the map view there, you actually don't need that much um, thrust. You don't need that much delta V to get out of orbit. In fact, I can get out of orbit with maybe 10, 20 meters a second of delta V. 
So for those who don't know, delta V is like the calculation you use to get how much stuff you have. Oh, there's a notification. So delta V, sorry, I'm not being very clear, is how much... Sorry, that was a little bug there. Okay, for the third time, delta V is the thing that allows you to calculate um, how much fuel you have, basically. How much you can change your orbit by in meters a second. And that means that it's actually really weird sounding, but that basically means that you cannot change your orbit by 200 meters a second if you only have 100 meters a second of delta V. However, this doesn't mean that you're only going to change your orbit by 200 meters a second. It only means you're changing your orbital speed by 200 meters a second. It's quite confusing. Uh, I had a few difficulties with that when I start, first started playing. Also, um, I am going to be going back to Kerbal Space Program videos soon. Well, at least one. I'm going to be showing off my SSTO. The... Mm, enter SSTO name here. SSTO. So here we are, touching down. Sorry, I didn't really go through, you know, everything. But yeah, I guess that's in the end of the video. Thank you all very much for watching. Like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you later.